then spend, you know, enormous amounts of time researching the subject. I've seen, you know, obviously documentaries on TV and, you know, Harry and the Hendersons was, a, you know, one of my favorite movies growing up and such. But other than that, I'm like, you know, I, I thought the possibility that something like that might be real. But did I ever expect to run into one or have any sort of like strange experience? No, not really. Um, so I'm like, you know, I, I made the joke. I was kind of on the, you know, uh, thinking Jack Link's com commercial uh, aspect of it, you know, haha, -ha, funny, funny. So we, like I said, we were about 75 to 100 yards away from the lean to, and the, the dog, he, he like kind of sniffed at the bones for a second, but he didn't want anything to do with them. And, you know, dogs with any sort of animal remain, remains or any sort of bones they're going to want to try and pick it up play with it what whatever he he really wanted nothing to do with them which i i kind of i was like i didn't think about it at the time but the more i think about it I, it's that was weird so we get up near the lean-to i come down the trail and it opens up and you could see the, the lean, i could see the lean-to behind the, the spruce trees and uh we we get up right to the opening and something was behind the lean-to and it took off and i it was big what whatever it was it was big because i all, i didn't see it but i could just see the brush shaking the tree branches shaking and it it made a ruckus going out of there now you know obviously a deer a bear a moose something like that gets spooked um it, it could potentially make a lot of ruckus running through the brush because it was it was really really thick back there um the the other strange thing was the dog immediately stopped in his tracks now i i sent you a picture of this of the, of the dog standing there intently looking behind the lean-to and he like like i said before like going down game trails the coyotes anything if he smelled the deer he wanted to chase it and he wanted nothing to do with going after whatever it was that took off and i i just i was like and i just had this weird eerie feeling the other thing that was really strange about the the really the whole trip was it was very 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 quiet um there was i i can't recall hearing you know birds or any sort of bugs other than the black flies buzzing in my ear and going up my nose but other than that it was just it was eerily quiet and there at the lean to it was it was it was very peaceful but at the same time it was it was like you're being watched like something's there you know and like i said i spent a ton of time in the woods hunting and i know that uh, you know when i go into the woods and you get settled in at first it's really quiet because you disturbed all the animals going in there but eventually things liven back up and you know if, you'll hear the squirrels running around the chipmunks running around the birds chirping um we spent about roughly two hours at the lean-to and there was really not a peep um i didn't hear you know any spring peepers uh, nothing it was it was just quiet but i, I kind of brushed it off at the time and it was it, kind of enjoying it to a point because my life is so chaotic i've got a bunch of a tribe of, of little ones at the house so i was like oh man this is this is this is quiet and it's nice but i just i, I really couldn't get settled after j the feeling and it was more the the overwhelming feeling of being watched now you know i felt like it was being watched in the woods before and you know you can attribute to it attributed to it any sort of animal but something that was just absolutely different about this feeling it was I, I don't even really know how to explain it it was like something is being watched and or something is watching you and um there's really nothing you could do about it so uh, after a little while we uh, you know when we first got to the lean-to I gather, like I said, the bugs were absolutely crazy and we had been moving pretty good. So, you know, it wasn't too bad. But once we stopped at the lean to um, the bugs were swarming pretty good. Um, I had a hammock with me uh, that uh, had a bug net on it. So uh, um, I, the dog was 
getting overwhelmed by the black flies. I, I actually got them to get in. I kind of pseudo set it up on the ground, um, tied it up. So, you know, it was up off the ground a little bit. And then uh, at least the bug net was got the dog in there and got him comfortable. And he was just kind of chilling, relaxing. Um, didn't want to run around. Uh, wasn't really interested in sniffing the place out or anything. It was just, it was, it was very strange the way he was acting. Um, and you know, the series of events that happened the whole way, it, it probably wouldn't have felt so crazy to me if it wasn't for how he was acting. Um, like I said, you know, it felt before that had been being watched in the woods or whatever. And you know, it, it, people have a sixth sense people, you know, have lost, lost track of this sixth sense, but it's still it's still in a lot of us. And some people, I think hunters are probably more in tune with it for spending so much time in the woods and lo looking and listening and, and doing all this. So uh, for him to be acting the way he was, it was, it, it was strange. So we spent about, like I said, two hours there. I got a fire going um, to, to kind of smudge out the bugs. And we just, we hung out. He didn't want anything to do with checking things out, looking around. We kind of just chilled. I, made up some lunch um we dozed off for a little bit but the whole time it was eerily quiet so then we i decided okay the, this is enough i kind of wanted to stay there a little bit longer and like i said before i wanted to scout out the area for deer hunting uh because the topography on the map looked excellent and it, it, everything you know looked like it was supposed to but i had i just i i didn't want to go deeper into those woods for some reason and i've never had that feeling before where i i don't want to go in there i'm always like yeah let's go see what's going what's going on in here let's check out where the deer are moving through and uh, you know make a plan i wanted nothing to do with going any farther into those woods and i don't think the dog did either so we stayed there for a while ended up packing up and uh got out of there i walked back out walked right past those draw bones and i thought for a second i'm like you know what i'm gonna pick those up uh it'd be a cool little trinket to have and uh, but i was just like you know what i'm gonna leave them there and uh, and move on maybe something somebody else will find it as cool as i did so we, we start out and it was pretty much the whole way out you just couldn't escape that feeling up until about a mile away from the trailhead um it became more relaxed. Uh, there was the, there was no more feeling of being watched, and the, it, the dog started acting normal again, and everything was fine. We got back to the car. Um, you know, I wasn't in a hurry to get out of there at that point. Like I said, it was a lot more relaxed, and we get in and we leave. Um, now, as I said before, you know, I wasn't a bigfoot Sasquatch researcher. I didn't, you know, spend a ton of time looking into this stuff. Uh, but it was a couple weeks went by and I just couldn't shake this feeling of, you know, something was absolutely different about that day in the woods. And I, I just couldn't escape it. And then, just, oh boy, I went down the rabbit hole with Bigfoot Sk Sasquatch, which gets absolutely nuts. It's definitely a rabbit hole, that's for sure. Now, in your experience being out in the woods as a hunter in particular, have you ever felt those moments in the past where, you know, like while you were walking in, you seemed to hit a wall and suddenly things felt differently? Your dog started acting differently. Have you had that experience before? Or was this the only time? Well, I, you know, I, I, I don't I, I don't bring dogs with me hunting, but um, I, there's been, of course, you're, you know, in the woods at night, you know, as, as a deer hunter or bear hunter, you're going in. Um, in the wee hours of the morning to get in your spot far before daylight, you know, I've, I've had crazy stuff happen. I've had a fisher climb up into the tree with me, like legit on it, like a foot away from my face on the other side of the tree trunk from me. Um, you know, I've heard coyotes, I, you know, all sorts of manner of things. Yes. The woods at night have, have been eerie. And once in a while in a day, you get a kind of a creeped out feeling like you're being watched, but it, nothing ever stood out like, like that day. Um, 
you know, I've, I've had the crap scared out of me by, you know, walking along the side of a pond and have a beaver slap its tail and you, you like jump out of your skin. You're like, what was that? And you're like, oh, okay, it was, a, it was a beaver. Um, but n- nothing, nothing like that day. I mean, like I said, it was the whole series of events from, you know, just the, the feeling, the quietness, the way the dog was acting, finding the jaw bones and then getting to the lean to, and then something takes off. Like it's been watching you this whole time and kind of knew your intent which was which is even weirder which you know that's a, a topic i'm sure we might talk about in itself sure now when it took off into the woods you mentioned you didn't see what took off but you saw the aftermath of the the trees breaking and branching branches and whatnot moving around uh, right, right. Was it super loud? Was it, you know, what did that sound like as it went? Oh, no, it was, it was, it was super loud. Like it, it took off and, um, you know, it, it, whatever it was, it was big because it, you know, it was white tailed deer. Um, you know, if it, if it takes off, it's either going to go on a flat out run or it's, it's kind of going to, you know, hop along. Um, and when it hops along, you can see its tail up in the air and so on. And, you know, it's a stark white tail and, and contrasting in the background. And you could pick that out a mile away. I didn't see that. And whatever it was, was definitely taller than I'd say five, six feet, because that's how far up that the, uh, the branches were shaking. So my initial impression was, okay, it's not a deer because I didn't see it bounding off. I didn't see the tail bobbing through the woods, which you could pick out real easily. Um, it, you know, maybe it was a bear cause it was, it was large, whatever it was, it was heavy. And, but I'm like, a bear's not going to be the, the branches aren't going to be moving that high up if it, if it was a bear. So now I'm like, okay, maybe a moose. Cause uh, you know, there's a, a ton of moose, you know, populating that around X as we speak. Sure. And so I'm like, uh, okay, maybe, maybe. It was a moose, and that, that was me trying to rationalize all, all the things that, you know, normally yeah. it, it would be. Yeah, definitely. And there's so many things that you said in your encounter that, you know, jump out to me because I've just listened to so many people talk about um, Bigfoot and Sasquatch encounters, such as the, the, the you know, you walking down the trail, and then suddenly there's a strange feeling. You're being paralleled in the woods. Your dog as you said, and that was the red flag to me as well. Once the dog starts acting weird, you know, you hear so many times in encounter stories that, you know, they're always out in the woods with their dog. That's, that's where their dog wants to be. And then suddenly there's like that strange feeling in the woods and their dogs start whimpering and they just, they won't go outside. They won't get out of the car. And these are, you know, these are dogs who live in the woods. And to me, that's just like an instant there's a primal connection to something that we as humans don't understand, but the dog does understand as an animal out in, you know, out in the wild in a sense. Um, that oh, was absolutely because that... they're far more in tune to their wild, in- exactly. wild instincts. Than we totally. Are. And then of course, you know, as you approach the trail, it saw, it saw, maybe smelled you, maybe heard you and, you know, you caught it and it took off and, I know exactly where you are, where you are. You know, we talked about it and yeah, it Mm -hmm. it is thick down there. It is very thick. You can't just, you can't just, you know, skirt your way through the woods, uh, down there. So whatever it is would have had to be able to just plow through the woods, like a freight train to go through those, those trees. Right. And it, like, like I said, when it, when it first happened and I made that joke about Sasquatch with the jawbones laying there, you know, it, it, to me at the time, it, it, it felt like a joke. It was like the thing, the thing to say, like, uh, okay, I'm joking here with my dog. Now, when I, I looked into it further, like I said, I would, didn't, I, you know, I'd watched basic documentaries that were like inconclusive and sure. you, you can't, it, you know, it, you don't gain anything out of it then, okay, it, it may not happen, but they didn't, they definitely didn't prove anything in my eyes. But the, the, what I found in the, the research in the months and, and so on to follow is that that's an, another potentially common thing with the Bigfoot Sasquatch is leaving, um, leaving trinkets like that for people to find. And like I said, it was in a weird spot. It was just like in a random, 
random spot, nowhere near the lean to. Yeah, definitely. It uh, it seems you know it seems super out of place, and you know you could go through you go. I mean, you you're a hunter. How many Mm -hmm. times in your thirty? 